trivia. After James Harden saw his 30-point streak come to an end at 32 games yesterday, we asked the question, which player now has the longest streak? Is it Westbrook, Paul George, or Kawhi Leonard? And the point is here, look how short it is. The answer is Russell Westbrook, and the active streak is three games long. So the streak went from 32 consecutive games to three. And I think he's had 40 games. plus in all those three games, actually. That just goes to show how rare what Harden did was. Now let's get to Kevin Durant and the Warriors taking on the Hornets. And Kevin Durant was on fire early in this game. Going to pick it up in the final seconds of the first tail and watch him just dancing around and finding space. Terrific ball handling from a guy 6'11 with unlimited range. Contested three. Knocks down the jump. Look at the bench. He had 15 in the first quarter alone. Second quarter, Warriors are up nine. And you're going to see DeMarcus Cousins from the outside and then from the inside, he brings the entire repertoire. That's classic, giving up a good shot to get a great shot as Sean Livingston kicks it out to Boogie and Boogie down low right there off the feet from Clay Thompson. He would have a terrific first half, six of seven from the floor in the first 15 first half points. He'd finish with a season high 24 points and 11 boards. Then he'd be involved in this ridiculous sequence. In the fourth quarter, Jeremy Lamb is going to lose a shoe. You're going to see it on the floor. You're going to see DeMarcus Cousins just get it out of the way. But hold on, he is called for a technical. The rule is you're not allowed to throw anything into the stands. This certainly does not seem as though it should have applied, but a technical is called on the play. And DeMarcus Cousins, when asked about it after the game, was not happy. Well, next time, you know, I just you know, step on the shoe and, uh, you know, roll my ankle, break it, you know, tear the kill, you know, just leave it out there next time. I guess that's what they mean. I keep that in mind. They win the game easily, but that was a crazy play. Jalen, should that have been a technical? I don't think so. It's a different way to silence the lamb, but at the same time, you, it's like debris in the middle of the road. I'm the person that actually get out of my car and moves it. Absolutely. All right. And this so is the happiest he's looked. You know, he looked the most comfortable tonight, and uh, he made it. He made a couple moves around the hoop uh, where he showed great agility. And, so this is the best he's looked. You, I don't know what he would say if you asked him if it was his best game, but, but he uh, he looked great. You know, Kay been preaching to me. Well, I ain't gonna say preaching. Kay been cussing me out. <laughs> you know, just about you know stop thinking about it and just go play my game. Um, you know, I found some spots and you know made some plays. So uh, like I said, it's good to get a good one under my belt. All right, so that ridiculous play notwithstanding, DeMarcus Cousins is rounding into form offensively. He was 5 of 9 on contested attempts yesterday, his most makes in a game this season. He'd been shooting just 27% when contested, so he'd been struggling. Last night, he looked really good. Maria, what was the game of the night in college hoops? Oh, it was definitely Kansas taking on K-State because Kansas, they're trying to win their 15th straight Big 12 regular season championship. Meanwhile, Kansas State sits atop the league rankings, and Mitch Lightfoot, he had a big night for the Jayhawks. He did, and really, this game was so important because if Kansas was to lose this game at home, they would be three games back with three to play against Kansas State. Well, the good news is Lightfoot comes off the bench, or Lightfoot comes off the bench, and he does everything offensively, but then also defensively. Get it out of here. Yeah, defense is where Kansas won this game. Kansas State had nothing going offensively. It was a struggle all night long. That guy was hyped. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look again. Kansas up 11 and light foot again. Yeah, do we get a finger wag? Oh, okay, we got one. We got just one it's little small, finger wag. It was very small. One. Dietrich Lawson, I think he's going to be the player of the year in the Big 12. Put Kansas up 13 after the free throw. And then later, Lawson hits the jumper. Uh, think of this, the freshman for Kansas, they were five years old the last time Kansas didn't win the Big 12. They still are holding out hope that they can get it done. Well, even if they win their final three games, they'll still need a little bit of help. And Kansas cut its deficit to the Big 12 standings to one game behind K-State. BPI gives the Jayhawks a 26% chance to win at least a share of the conference regular season title for the 15th consecutive season. Okay, we got plenty more news in college basketball, though. Duke Zion Williamson will not play tonight against Virginia Tech as he continues to recover from a, a right knee sprain that he suffered last week against North Carolina. Coach K said yesterday that Zion is getting better, but he's not going to put a timetable on his return. But the good news is Coach K has this guy, R.J. Barrett. He was a one-man wrecking crew Saturday against Syracuse. In addition to those 30 points, he also had seven assists which led to another 18 points, and he scored or assisted on 48 of Duke's 75 points, his most in a game this season. And also, he shot at 70% from the field. He was 14 for 20, which is so impressive. I mean, I know that Zion's out, so R.J. Barrett has to bear a bigger load, but coming into this season, you liked him, like, hands down. Yes. 
I thought he was clearly the number one pick coming into the season. Now, Zion has created the hype and the buzz because of just how physically dominating he is. But I think when you watch them play, R.J. Barrett's skill set, there is a defined position that he can translate into at the next level. You know, when we make the comparisons for Zion Williamson, Zion's great, all right? But as much as we question Kyler Murray because of his size, there might be some reason to question Zion Williamson because of his size as well, as far as his girth and the lack of height that he has. You know, people want to make comparisons to Blake Griffin. He's three inches shorter than Blake Griffin. So there's a difference between their game. Are you telling me that if you had the number one pick in the NBA draft this coming season, you would seriously consider taking R.J. Barrett ahead of Zion Williamson? I would. I would. Without, I, I would. I really would. I know that from the, the, the marketing standpoint and from the perspective as far as putting butts in the seat, Zion is going to be the guy that does that and accomplish that at a much higher level. It's not as far off as people think. And I know where you're going because I agree with a lot of your points about RJ. Shoot. He's an improved three-point sh shooter as well. But you have the number one pick. You have to take Zion. Why? Because you're going on to, the court reasons or off the court reasons? Or you're going to get fired. <laughs> That's why. Because Zion's upside is something that you have to bet on. Like, when you're projecting these young players, a lot of it is what they do now. But you also have to find out about their potential. And if both of these guys are able to maximize their potential, Zion's ceiling should be a lot is higher. Is it fair to say yeah. higher floor, higher ceiling kind of a conversation? Yes. Like, R.J. Barrett has a higher floor. He's going to be really good no matter, no matter what, what happens. Zion might turn into something we've never seen before. And what you're saying is you cannot take the risk of missing out on that. You cannot take the risk of missing out on that. Are, are you concerned at all about his inability to consistently knock down a shot from even 17 feet away in a league that demands that you're a shooter? Absolutely. I was the person that, you know, had a lot of things to say about Zion's game that he needs to work on for, for this entire season while still appreciating how he's dominating collegiate basketball. But however, if you have the number one overall pick, Zion Williamson's potential is so very high, you have to bet on it. But I agree with you. R.J. Barrett will probably be rookie of the year next uh, season. Uh, you know, people thought that the, the ceiling was high on like guys like Lonzo Ball and Magic Johnson said, hey, he's going to break all the records. Well, Jason Tatum's pretty good, too. You know, and, and I think that R.J. Barrett has the ability to be like that type listen, of player. Listen, listen, it's just like last year. DeAndre Ayton was the number one pick. Are we talking about him right now? No, we're talking about Luka Doncic. Right. Because oh. he, was, he was the most well-rounded player. Yep. The best skill set coming into the game. And instantly is going to make an impact. And, and we're going to be talking about him for Rookie of the Year. And I think that's the comparison to Zion maybe and RJ. But the, the other point that has to be made in this is that basketball becomes secondary when it comes to Zion. Right. So the second you draft Zion Williamson, every team in the league would printing do it. Printing money. You're yeah. printing money. Because your, your seat is filled every mm -hmm. single night. Your jerseys sell out and all that kind of thing. But that doesn't mean, to your point, that RJ isn't the Rookie of the Year. And that 10 years from now, RJ Barrett it isn't the best player in this draft. I'm not mad at that. And don't sleep on Cam Reddish. He's going to translate as well. He's going to be a knockdown shooter instantly. But for Zion, it's going to be a lot of situation. At Duke, he normally is their largest player out there. He's playing the five, yeah. mm -hmm. to your point. So in the league, he's going to be garnering minutes at the five spot. At six, seven, he's going to be shorter than the people that he goes against but almost heavier. every night. But can you do that but if you're heavier? heavier? These guys understand how to use their, their length and their height. Anthony Davis, Joker, DeMarcus Cousins. There's so many bigs that are able to function but still be good with their feet. This to me is a fascinating conversation because there's the on-court piece and very much the off-court piece. Speaking of college basketball, can I wrap this up with a little eye candy for you? Because I just want to show you this putback jam. This is Florida State Notre Dame last night. Watch Terrence Mann. Sean Farnham, give me the play-by-play. -play. Come out of nowhere and throw it down. Climb the ladder one time, Brady. <laughs> oh, that was an easy one for me. Look at that. something you can't understand. Oh, I could just kill him, man. <laughs> hey, Florida State is really good. Leonard Hamilton's team does not get enough publicity. They can flat out play. Terrence Mann is the truth. And his mom is a women's basketball coach. Shout out to you, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. But None of that was what I expected, but I liked it. Duke and Virginia, Super Tuesday tonight, tipping off that doubleheader again. Uh, excuse me, it's Virginia Tech tipping off the doubleheader tonight from Blacksburg. And then we got Wisconsin and Indiana from Assembly Hall. Both games are on ESPN, and they're on the ESPN app, so you can watch from anywhere. As we continue, we're counting down to the Combine. We'll tell you where Kyler is going to go. It's the one place that makes the most sense, and it's not where he's projected. Don't miss it. Next.